Hello everyone and welcome back to Pivot Point. As we discussed in the last lecture, this lecture is going to be all about the relevant terminologies that we are going to use within this tutorial and we are going to understand each and every topic mentioned over here in a detailed way so that we don't face any hassle while going through this SQL course. By the way, if you are already familiar with all of these terms mentioned on this page, then feel free to skip this lecture. However, I will suggest that you still give it a watch and I'm pretty sure that you will definitely get to learn something new today. So without wasting any time, let's get started with the first term which is data. If we go by theory, then data is nothing but a fact about any considerable object. For example, if you consider any individual, then his name, age, salary, blood group, his body weight, everything can be considered as a data. For example, each of these single information like employee ID, name, age, salary, gender, each one of these are data. Then what is a data type? Data type is nothing but the nature or the type of a data. For example, if you pay attention over here, Steve Smith is a data about an individual and the data type is, is a character data type or you can also call it string data type. So data mostly made up of letters and words will be a string data type. On the other hand, age and salary are integer data type, mainly numbers. And these are the two most frequently used data type. First is string or character data type and second is integer. However, data type is not limited to only these two. For example, the data within this first column that you can see, it can be considered as a serial data type. As a quick explanation, serial data type will give you all unique values within one column and it will not leave any of the cell as a blank value. If I will have to mention the fourth most frequently used data type, then it will be date time. Date time is a data type that will give you the information about date, month, year, time, time zone, etc. And these are the most frequently used data types. Just to summarize one more time, this is string or character data type. These are integer data type. If you will see a number with a decimal, then that will be referred as a float data type. This could be an example of a serial data type and a column containing the information related to day, month, week, time, time zone, etc. will be most often referred as date time data type. If you will go to Google search and search for data types in SQL, you will get to see this nice article from W3 school. And if you will visit the page, then you will get to see a lot of data types along with the explanation. For instance, only within the category of a string data type, we have these many variety of data type like character, where care, binary, etc. And also within the numeric data type, you have this many kind of data types and you will also see an explanation against each and every type of data type on this page. All these data types are good to know, but I would suggest that you pay your attention mainly on those four data types that I have mentioned earlier. Okay, moving on to the third term, which is record observations or rows. So over here on the screen, each value inside this employee ID column belongs to one particular row. And as you can see, each individual row has five data inside it. So if you're someone who works on Excel spreadsheets most of the time, you will refer it as rows. However, when you're working on SQL or even with Pandas library on Python language, these will be most often referred as observations or records. Similarly, let's understand about feature attribute or column. And yes, as most of you have already guessed it, these are the columns on the screen that you can see starting from employee ID, name, age, salary and gender. And each column is telling you that what information you have in the form of data over here. The term column is often used in Excel. However, again, if you are working in SQL or Python, then you may get to hear the term as attribute or features. So let's quickly discuss table. This entire information that you can see on the screen, including all the data from all the records and all the columns is called a table. For instance, we have this demo of the employee table over here. As a data analyst, it is very important that you have a good knowledge on the schema of the database that you're working on. But prior to that, you need to understand that what is a schema in all together. So if you will simply do a Google search with DVD rental database for PostgreSQL, you will get to see this link from the official website of postgresqltutorial.com and if you will visit that page, you will get to see a structure like this. Please allow me to break it down for you. So each of these category, inventory, rental, film category 
and other boxes that you can see they are nothing but tables tables just like this one that you can see on the screen similarly each one of these are tables and the items or list that you can see inside the table like over here we have film id category id and last update they are nothing but the columns within each and every table and please pay attention over here you can see that each and every table is linked with another table like we have a link over here over here and for rest of all the tables they are definitely linked with one or another table and let's see how within this category table we have this column named as category id and this category table is showing a relation with this film category table and within this film category table as well you will find this category id column which was also common there in the category table for example let's take this customer table over here it is showing two relation with two different tables first is with this rental table and second is with this payment table observe carefully this customer table has a column named as customer id and going by its first relation with the rental table the rental table also has a column named as customer id and the same customer id column is also common over here within this payment table okay so far we have some understanding that all these tables are linked with each other with some specific columns and these columns are actually used in order to combine two different tables to form a new table however our focus is not on that what we are trying to understand over here is that the various relation within all these different tables is called a schema so i will zoom out for you so that you can see all the tables and their relation with each other at once as you can see each and every table is definitely linked with another table and this relation itself for all the tables is called the schema and if we take everything into consideration then this entire view is called as a database so just to summarize everything database is nothing but a collection of lot of tables and the way these tables are linked with each other the kind of relation they have with each other is called the schema of the table so i hope that is clear to you so we have understood what is schema and we have also understood what is a database which is nothing but a collection of all the tables stored at one place okay now one of the most important part let's understand what is a dbms if we go by the standard definition then i can say that dbms that stands for database management system is a collection of programs or you can say a software that enables us to access database and after accessing the database you can store retrieve or manipulate the data and it also helps to manage the access to database by different users now let's try to understand that in a simple way so dbms or database management system is nothing but a software where you can set up a database database like the way we have seen over here in this example and you can store hundreds of database like this into one dbms system and after storing the database inside one dbms it gives you the control to access the database or multiple database at a time and after accessing the database you can store retrieve or manipulate the data and with the help of dbms you can also control the access for different users in your company or organization obviously you would not like to grant the admin right for all the users who simply needs a read access to your database so you would not want anyone and everyone to play around with the schema or the structure of your data right so we have understood what is a dbms now let's move on to the topic of rdbms rdbms with a property of handling or dealing only relational data and this is why it is called as rdbms relational database management system and in case you still have any confusion understanding what is a relational database then it is nothing but the data in form of rows and columns like we have seen over here in this example there are other type of database as well but relational database is one of the most widely used database and any database management system that handles or deals with relational data is called a rdbms or relational database management system i have also listed few top examples of a relational database management system and those are microsoft sql server mysql oracle sql postgresql and sql lite by the way PostgreSQL is the DBMS or RDBMS that we are using throughout this course which means Postgre is a software that we are going to install and configure within this tutorial playlist where we are going to set up a database a database that contains a lot of tables all tables related with each other with a well defined schema 
and on that database itself we are going to perform all the sql queries and learning there will be a separate lecture on how to configure install and set up postgresql so don't worry about too much at this moment on this okay finally we have this question or topic sql versus mysql in my initial days when i was learning sql it became very confusing for me because after learning sql I thought that now I have to learn a completely new concept of MySQL. But later on I realized that MySQL is not a programming language or any query language just like SQL. However, it is just a DBMS or RDBMS that we can see over here just like others listed over here. So, it is quite possible that you will be asked in the interview also that what is the difference between SQL and MySQL and you can simply say that mysql is a dbms or you can say rdbms where you can store or configure a database and you can then create retrieve or manipulate the data stored over here with the help of a language that is sql so sql is a language that allows you to create manipulate or fetch data from a database a database which is being configured in a database management system just like mysql so i hope that now you have a good understanding on all these topics if you did not have it earlier and if you found this video helpful please please do consider dropping a like below and subscribing to the channel and in the next lecture we are going to download and install postgre and pg admin on our computer system so please do not miss that and i will see you in the next lecture